I'm a media clerk. And you're going to find out some first time stuff. Not. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Don't say that. Jason Momoa, you do speak some Dothraki. I, I, I've been known to, yeah, say a few things. Go on, then. Do you want, all right. <laughs> well, for the ladies. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I know I love you, but sorry. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and for the gentlemen? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that Euron cares about family and bloodlines at all? I think he's a family man. He just likes to kill them first. And then maybe... Be, be, I have no idea why I said that. <laughs> it's one of those, like, is he a family man? The first thing we see him, he throws his, bro his brother over a bridge. And in the second scene, he's trying to kill his niece and nephew. So maybe calling him a family man would be pushing it a tiny bit. Mm. But, but, you know, he's... Uh, I think, like every good villain, he wants to settle down, have a wife and some kids. <laughs> oh, he's got so much more to say to me. That's how I Googled myself was pretty much the last time I Googled myself because <laughs> I don't do it anymore because it's really bad. Like, don't do it. Don't Google yourself ever. Um, people have a lot of opinions on my butt. <laughs> first time I met a super fan. I think the first time was in Barney's. That was when it was like super duper fan when their elevator doors opened and this woman was just like, Khaleesi. And then the doors closed and then I left. So that was kind of okay. Yeah, I'd love that, yeah. yeah. What was Jamie's high point in this series from your perspective? <sighs> and by that I mean series as in Game of Thrones. Yeah. And I mean series one. No, I understand one. the question. Do you remember when we used to read normal sentences, but like Sean Bean, like Ned Stark in... I <laughs> that I do. <laughs> I well, listen. What I've, a pedish little game. Have you? Yeah. Go on. If you could go back and change one decision Brie Brienne made over the seasons. What's what, my name? What's the character what, name? Brain. Brian. Brian. If you could go back and change one decision Brian made over the seasons, <laughs> what would it be and why? Brian of Tar. For, for your characters, for the most part now, you've all been on the other side of, of the world with Daenerys in some form or capacity, and now here you all are now on your way to Westeros. We're here to mess stuff up. It's <laughs> <laughs> the polite way of putting that. Right, I'm gonna give you a sentence, right? Yeah. And then you gotta say it, like, yeah. like you was in Game of Thrones. Like, like I would jump Like snow. you were on top of wall, and you were like staring out to all the wildlands. All the wildlands. All right, I've got it. If you guys, do you guys dress up? Do you... I've never gone to a Comic-Con dressed up. We were talking about this, what we were kind of, you know, what we would want to do if we wanted to go incognito, if we wanted to go, as, you know, really just, mm. just trying to show off something they really enjoy. And I was thinking that I see, I go, I go to Comic-Con sometimes and I see kind of eight-foot-tall kind of, like, Warhammer avatars of people, like, yes. space marine outfits. Yeah. And they take off their helmets and bless their heart to come and they're like, oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh I've been here for six hours, I'm starving. You know, I, I, I thought that they are so good, though. They're so impressive. They must just put them in, like, massive rigs in their garage and put them Together. So I'd love to. I'd love to go on one of them, mm. or go as Link from Zelda. <laughs> How hard was it losing Hodor? Oh, it was the worst. I, I still feel personally responsible. I'm really sorry. Um, yeah, it was. That was sad. Not only, well, I mean, the way they did that was just mortifying because it's. You find out this huge revelation about who Hodor is, and that's something we've been finding. We've been waiting to find out for seasons. And that's so sad in and of itself that Hodor was basically dicked over by Bran in the past. Um, and then, on top of that, just as you find out this sort of soul-crushing um, um, information, Hodor is then sacrificed. So it's just blow after blow. <laughs>
Brian was teaching me archery because I can't tell you. Oh, I could. It's a hobby. It's Jean's hobby. I hope I haven't given anything away. It's fine. There's the Instagram video of Brian and I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Cause he was the only one who could actually hit the target. I missed every time. Which is why it's so handy that Jean is, is, uh, is telekinetic. It's all just that. And that's it. It's great. We've got, we've got a picture of, uh, this is you and Amelia as the Drogos. And uh, that's for the thing. The Drogos. <laughs> <laughs> You're Mr. and Mrs. Drogo, aren't yes, you? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were lovely the Drogos, I didn't yeah. even hear <laughs> I'm ready to take it on. Let's do it. Hi, Sophie. I have some nail colors. Are you fing kidding me? With the Drogos, with the dragons. They're coming over tonight, the Drogos. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't bring that bloody dragon. <laughs> yeah, you Sorry, that wasn't in character at all, but f me, that was sick. So you did not, when did you learn how you were going to come back to life? When you got the first script, did you reach out to the producers or writers? To... I, didn't, I didn't know how I was coming back to life. I mm -hmm. just knew that they said, don't cut your hair. You know, that's <laughs> basically what they said. Yeah. Don't change anything. Don't go do anything drastic. We don't want to tell you this because we wanted you to be worried, but now we have to tell you, so. Why would they want you to be worried? Because they're sadistic. The showrunners are sadistic. <laughs> have you not noticed that yet? Yes. They're so horrible. They're horrible people. They like causing pain. What does he dislike about himself? Um, I would say he, oh God, that's a hard one, isn't it? Um. He, he dislikes the fact that... <laughs> 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 um, I would say he, uh, yeah, I guess he dislikes that, that that, that is not happening anymore. <laughs> I'd say he dislikes that, yeah, for sure. Does Euron actually believe in the drowned god and the religion of the Ironborn, or is he just taking the piss out of it? I think he believes in himself, which is even more dangerous. He's so self-confident and he doesn't give a shit about anyone or anything. For him, it's all about gaining power and um, bully the people around him. <laughs> Lack of better words, he's, 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 he's half snake, half baboon. You know? I'm all cat. <laughs> That's the real thing. This is just uh, a couple at home who've tried to recreate this. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Outside the family, mm -hmm. and he, uh, when she was about to get raped, he stepped in, and, and that you know lost his hand, and that changed his whole perception of self, and that thus he has become the better man for. So, it. what would you say she's done for him? Uh, that, that's that's. Would you say she's made him a more likable character, a more human no. character, no. someone that audiences can connect no. with more? Do but you think they would come been... up to the actress that played she Brienne of been... Tarth and I... say, "I didn't like that Jamie character before you. No. You made him likable. You did. You did." No. What's your favorite fan theory that you've heard? My favorite Kit, that somebody's come up to you, and yeah. came up with a a theory about Jon Snow, or anything about Game of Thrones that but... threw you for a loop. There was a, a there was a weird one where it's, it almost doesn't make sense, but they kind of this 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 guy came up to me and said that are you like that he thought that it would all end and it would pan out and it had all been one of like my it been a dream ghost had been having a dream. Does that make sense? Like ghost, my direwolf hmm. had dreamt it all somehow so game of thrones is and that was that was his theory and he was dead serious about it i went that is please never become a screenwriter that is the <laughs> worst ending can you imagine if it ended like that everyone would be like what the one of those days it was either a day that we shot the, the execution scene which was really really hard or um it was it was this season which we just shot um so i shouldn't say that <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing exactly. your worst day. And then we'll talk about it again after it comes out. What is it about Davos that makes him so likable? Uh, that's that's a good question. I cut down to that. Don't, what are you looking at me like that for? Mm, I'm uh, interested in your answer. It's what you bring to it, Liam. That's what makes him likable. I was waiting for that and it wasn't coming forward. What you bring to it. Just zooms in on Yeah, ghost. like the worst ending, like they wake up and it's a dream, but actually it's it's a dog dream. I mean, it's well, I think dreadful. the worst would be is that it, it, it would not be ghost a dire wolf, but it would be ghost just a regular dog. In, in a house. In a house. In and, you're, and you're the one who's coming home. Hi, honey, I'm home. And you just flip ghost a snack. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with Westeros. Yeah. Nothing to do with King's Landing. It's all Landing been a canine anything. dream. That, I mean, actually, now I'm talking about it. That's, that would be, if you really wanted to piss off everyone who'd been watching for the whole time. Spin-off, that's Spin all I'm off. saying. Yeah. Absolutely, and do you have any favorites tonight? Um, I mean, I actually, I think it's maybe because I just watched it last night, but Arrival, I watched, and I thought it was amazing, but I mean, Manchester by the Sea, all of them, Moonlight, they're all amazing. Yeah. Stunning. I can't really choose. And I wasn't allowed to say who I, who I loved when I was announcing, you know, the yeah. nominations, so um, probably not allowed now, I don't know. <laughs> No, no. And tonight, are you going to hit the after party? Of course I am. Of course I am. In that How dress. could I not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm going to have dinner in this dress and then I'm going to be really bloated and I'm going to be like, <laughs> so maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just go home and sleep and have a cup of tea. So. Next question. That's a great answer. Who would you like to see on the Iron Throne? I would like to see Brienne of Tarth on the Iron mm -hmm. Throne. And why is that? I think she would be an honourable and just ruler. That's such a wonderful answer. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather Brian have no? What character or actor do you wish? Hello, hello. You could shoot scenes with. Who? Can you read? Ready. All right. Okay. You should do this bottom one. All right. And action. Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. <laughs> and if you weren't playing Podrick, do you have another favourite character that you'd like to play? Wormsy. Wormsy, mate. Wormsy, mate. <laughs> Wormsy. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Can I ask you a question, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting waved at over here, so... Ozzy, man. <laughs> <laughs> he can fire? Is your, does your hair come with the Hans Zimmer hat? Or is it your hair? <laughs> I can change hat. Whether or not it's my hair, you know, you can take your guess. Take your guess. Okay, I'm gonna guess it's not your hair. I think I can see you've got a, a shaved head under there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oz Comic Con, famous for having absolutely crazy fans. So, have you been confronted by committed an fans? Like not crazy fans. Yeah, you've you've, done, you've done it before, so you probably you can, you can tell me actually whilst we're giving everyone. A I movie. I attended a wedding at Comic-Con a few years ago when I was in Perth or Adelaide, one of the two, I actually went to somebody's wedding who was getting married. Wow. So if, if you're watching, I hope you're still married. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, that was entirely bizarre. Is that weird? Yeah, really weird. Oh, so great for them, though, to have you in their yeah. wedding photos. Uh, apparently so. Yeah. There, are, there, are, there have been weddings in Game of Thrones that haven't turned out so yeah. well. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. If they're not together, there's something really terrible that's happened. <laughs> that is what you want to create as an actor, something that can be always unexpected. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's written that way, but you want to kind of confuse people, you know, and make them like you and wonder why. And it's easy to make them hate you, especially if you're pushing you know, people out, out of, through, the, through the floor and stuff like that, that you've just married. There are moments in there where I do, you know, very honestly kind of lay my you know, heart, open, bear, you know, although that phrase didn't quite work. Lay my cards on the table, bear my whatever. Yeah, well, do you think he 100% loved Catalan? Yeah, still do. I miss the brothel. Are you okay? Do you want me to read it out? Like we do with your line, shall I read it out and then you repeat it and that's how you learn it. Should we do that? I'm so proud of you. Pick that up. 
Yeah, I could take on Egret. Uh, ginger versus Ginger. I think I have the upper hand. I mean, did you see what I just did? That was amazing. Uh, uh, I, well, in the first couple of scenes, I used to make things up just to see if uh, if people would buy it. Like I remember being asked on the red carpet what I was doing next, and I said that Peter and I were going to do a musical version of um, uh, of Grey Gardens. And did you see that? And people went, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that made me laugh. And but I no, would it's watch not hard. That. Yeah. Who would you class to see? Obviously, oh. I'm the one with the jumper on my head. Yeah. And there was a really funny moment as well when, because um, we all have to rise in unison and down and go down. So we have to go down in unison for the king and then rise up in unison. And obviously, we, we can't see him because all of our heads are down like that. And uh, I won't say who, but one person just rose up really quickly before everyone else and then just looked around and just went, <laughs> and then like, came back up again. Um, that was bloody hilarious. That made us laugh a lot. Because we were all quite nervous, and then for something like that to happen, it just all made us very, very relaxed. Do you know what I mean? So it I was, hope it was Aria. It, uh, I'm not going to say. Imagine Aria finally gets back to Winterfell, right? Yeah. And she, like, knocks on the gates, OK? And mm. you open the door. Yeah. And I go, it's a me, a Mario. <laughs> And then just like, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. <laughs> I just hopped down the pipe. <laughs> oh, thank you. You've done so well. I really appreciate when that. When we started out, <laughs> it, was a, it was a struggle for the first few years, but you've really grown. I want to thank you for that. Is Wormsy still traumatised by his backstory and the slavery that he's endured? I, I would argue that he'd never get over it, but maybe the power of love will help him get over it. With Miss Sandy. With Miss Sandy. With with Miss with Miss Sandy. Hey, Miss Sandy. Miss Sandy. Sandy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wormsy. Wormsy. That's your nickname. That's what I call you in the reviews. Is that the first time you've heard it? Yeah, yeah. I like it. Just a quick show of hands. How many of you, seriously, are still surprised your character's still alive? <laughs> That's everybody. <laughs> the, the thing about Thrones is they sort of use what you have, what what us as actors are kind of using in real life how we how we kind of get on in real life and then they embellish that into the series is that so yeah it's quite it's quite an interesting way of doing what, things what examples from the past have have uh that you can lay out here is something that they've done for snow i for always snow. commented on how how short i am <laughs> in life so they keep putting that into john snow you know being small having a tiny pecker <laughs> You know, stuff like this. It's just <laughs> they just they just want to rip the piss out of you. What is that? They are really sadistic yeah, people. Yeah, I guess yeah, for not, people who have created Ramsay Bolton in the Red Wedding and think, well, the Red Wedding was in the books, but yeah. Ramsay Bolton I mean the scene with the dogs and just yeah, David Benioff and Dan Weiss, they're not nice people, I mm -hmm. promise you. No, but it's <laughs> <laughs> Is there a character on actor you'd like to work to work with that you haven't worked with so far? <laughs> See, this is what I have to deal with. Um, that I haven't worked with so far. I really wanted to work with Tywin Lannister. I really, really wanted to spend a lot of time with Tywin Lannister and work with, with that character. Because the actor Charles Dance is absolutely exemplary. Hilarious, brilliant, he's masterful. Uh, he's an absolutely accepting, uh, uh, exceptional actor how, and an acting legend. Thank you. How, how? Isn't it my turn? No, I have a question. How important in your personal growth <laughs> has can working you, with me been? I mean, you kind of go, I've got to tell you, friend, I, I really don't know. <laughs> um, I really don't know, but I wish I did because you've got me curious as well. But they, they do it all the time. I mean, I remember when we first, when the first show, the, the show first took off, and online on HBO's website there was a family tree of every single main household, and I was kind of going, Oh my God, that's my that's my mother. Yeah. I have no idea. That's what my mother's called. He's supposed to have a brother called Willem, and they, this is, I've got to open the book again. So it does. It gets really confusing after a while, yeah. um, but they lay it out very, very concisely. I, I would hope there's a big whiteboard in the production office somewhere where you can just be checking yeah. on it. <laughs> With like a big logo, just, just so you know who you are. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I should win the award for being the biggest boss ass bitch around town, and for shooting a guy in the face with a plastic arrow. I'd like to thank my mom. I, I hit Kyle in the face twice. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Dan, why does Pod want everyone to like him so much? <laughs> <laughs>
Um, starved of attention in his youth, I think. Uh, yeah, it, I, I imagine that's that's the reason that most people want to be liked is because it seems like not many people like him. He's been treated kind of poorly by a lot of people, so that's probably why he's so desperate for attention. Mm. The question behind the question then was, why are you such a kiss ass? Me, I think personally, um, just just the easiest way at the top, in it. I don't need a squire. Do you think? I that, think it's think more that like that thing? that thing when you know when you break an arm and it mends, and the arm will get stronger. It doesn't mean that it's nice to break it. It's still painful. <laughs> That's what I meant. Okay. Now I have a question for you. What? <laughs> no, I shouldn't stop doing it. I was about to make something up. People have watched the trailer. There's a lot of people talking about this online, but apparently there's a bigger battle scene in season seven. I've heard the biggest we've seen yet on I Game of Thrones. I think there are a couple. Couple? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not just one. Well, I'm running that down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Right. Oh, my God. Becky. Look at her butt. <sighs> butt. Butt. Look at her butt. It's so big. She looks like one of those rat guys' girlfriends. Aye, you're so right. Aye, you're not wrong there. You're not wrong there, gal. Aye, you're not wrong there. Did you ever have any plot points throughout the season ruined for you by somebody? Uh... I had the opposite what I thought. Jack Gleason made me think I'd ruined his death for him. Because <laughs> I brought, because I'd read the books and I brought it up and he was like, what are you talking? And he did really, really <laughs> good poker face yeah. for ages and I was like, I'm so sorry. He's like, no, I know. Yeah. Scrum Half's the little guy. Okay. He's the smallest guy in the scrappy. rugby team. You're scrappy. Yeah. Scrappy, yeah. He's, he's hard to catch. Uh, and he's, he takes the ball out of the scrum half and he's a back and he, and he gets it out to the backs. Mm -hmm. the, back, the back line, you might say. So did you realize early on that perhaps acting was the better way for you to go? Is that what you're saying? I or? remember the tackle that did it, yeah. What was that? Uh, I, you know, I was, I was all right at rugby. I was playing quite a high level. But there's something that happens to young men when they go from being like 16, 17 years old to suddenly I was playing at 18 years old. And you know when young men go from being young men to men. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I got hit with a tackle. And I was in the drama society at the same time as being in the <laughs> rugby team. And I kind of, I thought, I gotta, I gotta protect this, you know? The money maker. I'm gonna, I'm gonna protect the money maker. <laughs> One more hit like that to my face, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I can kiss acting goodbye. <laughs> He's an island of sanity in a sea of madness. How's that for poetry? Oh, wow. Nice. You like that? That's poetic as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I read it somewhere. I think it was on the back of a cornflakes box or something like that. Hakuna Matata. Ain't no passing craze. <laughs> oh! And then I can imagine, like, the score, like, kicks in, and then it just, like, Don't... pans off. And, and then, then it like... goes like this. <laughs> Hakuna Matata. Matata. The first time Jason Momoa was in a hotel lobby in Belfast, and um, I walk in and I'm like exhausted, and I have my bags, and I'm really tired, and we just, it was really late at night, and I walked in, and from the other side of this enormous lobby, I hear, Wifey! And this huge Hawaiian man comes bounding over to me, picks me up, and genuinely gets me in like a rugby tackle to the floor. It was only when he picked me back up and kind of dusted me off, and I was like, who are you? I've been trying to figure this out like everyone has for, for years. And then I had an a, a, a epiphany the other night and I, I suddenly saw it. The other night? I suddenly realized what how it ends. Um, and I'm not saying, because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask David Benioff when I see him later, because I think I've figured it out. Will he give you a straight answer? No, he never gives anyone a straight answer. Does he even know, do you think? No, him, well, Dan Weiss and David Benioff definitely know, yeah. They know how this is going to wind up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. I hope so. Otherwise, I hope so. well, I don't know. I mean, otherwise uh, they're bricking it as well. They're, <laughs> they're bricking it. <laughs> they don't know what's okay. What's coming? What is it about the Hound that makes him so likable and popular? It was a bit comedy with his uh, just his the way he speaks, uh, his gruffness, uh, his no nonsense approach. Um, Hound's fabulous. His use of the English language is fantastic as well. I like. Yeah, a bit like myself. <laughs> Indeed, a poet. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, amazing. Well, have the most incredible time. Thank so you so much. Lunch. You Enjoy too. It. Have a good night. Yeah. Have you done, have you done this much before? I've been to the Bafta. I've been to the Bafta once before, but that was a that was many moons ago. So I'm excited to come and uh, be an adult and be legally allowed to drink at the Bafta. Amazing. Well, I love how everyone is like yelling. Yeah, you've had the best response so far from down the carpet. That's not true. They're just very sweet. It's because I'm here early. Just wait till Will and Kate. Um, <laughs> my mum's not watching, obviously, so I can say I was really young. I was like too young to know, you know, and you're like, what's this? The grown-ups drink it, I'm going to try. Um, and, uh, and then kind of blanked out. <laughs> it was with a friend and I like straight up blacked out. Because when you're that young, when you're really like, you know, young, <laughs> you shouldn't drink vodka. So I'm just really nervous coming back to me now. I broke something. <coughs> yeah. If the hound wasn't a soldier or a fighter, what would he do? Does the man have a dream? In or in in that in that society. Mm. Well, he nearly had it, didn't he? Well, he they nearly were... had peace. Yeah. He nearly had peace. It only lasted one episode, I think. I think that was it. You know, he could have been a an asset to some community, building things and strong guy, and even maybe potential protector of it that that's what he, he was he was nearly there and then it was just taken away from him ah. and now the hound's back oh, 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 bring yes. it on <laughs> oh it's freezing but bring it on <laughs> it's like the terminator a few days ago i was in costco for the first time of my life and this guy i couldn't understand why i thought he was having a really terrible day but he was like shaking and crying and i was like are you are you okay and then he was just like winter is coming <laughs> and that's all he said it was amazing it was my favorite fan interaction just tears tears and joy for you guys has working on the show ruined it for you as viewers or are you still able to enjoy it i hate this show <laughs> i can hate it so much no, it doesn't ruin it for me at all. I would, like, I'm a bit starstruck sitting next to Daniel. You see that look he just gave me? Yeah, you guys have had a long day, haven't you? <laughs> Been a couple of days. <laughs> um, I watch it on my own. What do you mean? I don't know, I can't watch them with other people. What do you mean? Because I sit, I, I sit there in, in a state of nervous tension. And I, I only watched them once, and I watched them on my own in a dark room, and then... What um, do you mean nervous tension? You know well, what no, happens. I'm, wo I'm whooping, and I'm enjoying it, and I'm like... But I'm on my own. It's it's, it's sad. It's a sad thing. <laughs> <laughs> do you need a hug right now, Kat? Yeah, I you, might do. Would you like... <laughs> um, you, so you, on one side, you have <clears throat> uh, cold nights and uncomfortable journeys, and then on the other side, you have wine and hookers. So you, you think Tyrion's the, the clear choice. It's a much more comfortable existence. He doesn't have to make fires. He doesn't need to skin rabbits. He just gets to do some laundry occasionally, pour some wine, shoot the shit with his mate. Um, and then, yeah, he gets sent to the brothel every time he does something good, so. Yeah, Tyrion was a good boss, eh? Bonuses. Back it! Over there! Look! Look at a lot of that! I can't look at that! <laughs> Cop a bit of that, Becky! <laughs> Get out. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> no!